even knowing what they're saying. The jesters in the back of the synagogue will not even know that that's what they're saying. They're actually praying to a God. Those who are observant Jews or those who go once a year, I suppose even Bernie Sanders will be, even though he's a non-observant Jew. Non-observant Jew, that's sort of like a prideful thing amongst Jews, non-observant. But when they're politicians, suddenly they observe. Because they never met a congregation they didn't like. And so tonight they go in there and they bow down, they put on the cap, and uh, they recognize that there's a higher authority than them. They don't, they don't believe it, though. They know that they are the ultimate authority. And then begins the Day of Atonement. And Jews around the world are supposed to apologize for all the bad stuff they've done. For 24 hours, they beg and they beg God. They beg God to write them in the Book of Life. They say that by cleansing themselves of their sins of the year and by apologizing publicly, God should forgive them and put them in the book of life. And, they, and then it ends tomorrow night at sundown. And then they, uh, after the fast, everyone hopes that God saw them, writes them in the book of life for another year. All right, let's hope that these rituals have meaning. I don't know how it works out that the next day a bus of school children could be blown up by a terrorist. I don't, I don't get that. Any more than I understand God's ways when I see a bus full of Christian children go off a cliff in, in the south and the children die. I don't get that. Or when I see children suffering in hospitals, I don't get it. Or when I see evil people in Congress getting away with virtual murder, I don't get that. Or when I see people deceiving the people of America under the guise of environmentalism I don't, and getting away with it. And no one, nobody sees through it. I mean, the king has no clothes was written for a reason. It's about the pope. The, 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 the child's uh, book, King Has No Clothes, is about this pope. The richest, one of the richest churches in the world, don't give a dime to the people they want us to pay for it, knows nothing about the environment. They latched onto the environment to push their global agenda. They decry savage capitalism, yet they give away none of their money. Unbelie and now he's an expert on climate change. Look, I understand about religion, how it works. From, a, from the institutional point of view. I'm nothing against organized religion. A lot of people love it, and I myself, I go in and out of these things once in a while. It's not a big deal to me. I think the church is a wonderful institution, and uh, I've supported it. And I think that we need to protect ourselves against Islam, and I wish the church would do that instead of protecting us against climate change. 51% of U.S. Muslims want Islamic law. U.S. Muslims. They want Islamic law in your country. 25% of your Muslims in this country are okay with violence against infidels. Tell that to CAIR, the front group. Go ahead, go tell it to them. And we're going to bring in now 200,000 of them, 70% of whom are men of military age, and they're not even from Syria. Why is Obama flooding America with men of military age, Muslims, who are not even from Syria? Why is he doing it? How can he do it? I lay awake at night asking, how can he do it? Are we not a nation of laws? Are we not a nation of checks and balances? Are we not a representative democracy? I ask myself three o'clock in the morning. I'm having a little trouble sleeping lately when I see this dictator emerging in front of my eyes. But it gets even worse when I see the visitor from Rome on the same page with this dictator, with the biggest con of all time. That's really worrisome. I've never seen a church link up with a, a, a political leadership in my lifetime like this. Never. It's never happened. So if you think it's all happening by chance, I, I would disagree with you. Vehemently disagree with you. Not by chance at all, my friends. The communists are on the move worldwide, and they're controlling your life, whether you know it or not. And the question is, how far does it go, and can they be stopped? Well, it's a topic that we'll have to talk about and uh, read about. And in my new book, Government Zero, I'll read it when it comes out, but it's not out for a while. But I suggest you pre-order this book, No Borders, No Language, No Culture, a message for its time, a true message for its time. So I could go on and on about Francis and his false message. I think I made my point. Or I can go on and on about uh the issues of the day and the campaign, and I don't know, that's kind of boring now. It's a year away till we really care about the election. However, there is one politician who did blast the Pope, who I, I'll tell you, he has guts. 
Chris Christie, blast the Pope for embracing Cuba, harboring killers. You have to hear clip number one. It's really good. I just think the Pope was wrong. Um, and so the, the fact is that um, his infallibility is on religious matters, not on political ones. Um, and the fact is that for me, um, I just believe that when you have a government that is harboring fugitives, murdering fugitives, like Joanne Chesimar, who murdered a state policeman in New Jersey in cold blood, was broken out of prison and has been harbored for the last 40 plus years by a Cuban government that has paid her and held her up as a hero, that this president could extend um, diplomatic relations with that country without getting her returned so that she can serve the prison sentence that she was sentenced to by a jury of her peers in New Jersey is outrageous. And so I, I just happen to disagree with the Pope on this one. Good for him. I think he's number two right now in the hierarchy of the Republicans. He'd make a great president. Yeah, he's weak on certain issues, but at least he has the issues in his head. He didn't need to read a script on it. So Christie just went way up. Stop telling about Fiorina was the winner. That's, that's a liberal narrative. I just got an email from a, uh, what is this group? They're probably representing a, uh, I got to find out what the firm is. I don't know. I don't, it's from a PR agent. It says, Pope Francis morally wrong on fossil fuels. Hi, Michael. Pope Francis, in his encyclical, says the earth has become, quote, an immense pile of filth. And we have a moral responsibility to go green to clean it up. However, in his latest column at Forbes.com, Alex Epstein, author of The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels, says if Pope Francis really wants to help humanity, especially the poorest human beings, he needs to recognize that fossil fuels make Earth not a pile of filth, but a far better, healthier, cleaner, and more bountiful place to live. According to Epstein, as our use of fossil fuels has increased, so has life expectancy along with every other metric of human well-being, from income to access to health care, to nourishment to clean water access, the most growth has been among the poorest people in the world. Climate-related deaths are down 98% over the last 80 years. So the Pope is an ignoramus when it comes to fossil fuels. He is reading an encyclical written f for him by an academic leftist dolt, somebody that would probably fit right in at Harvard or Berkeley or Stanford in one of the soft departments where they can get away with this stuff. And so that's our problem, is that we're not just talking about religion. Would, he, would, he be, would we even be talking about this pope in any ways whatsoever if he was not stepping on our economic system and taking the side of our enemies, our mortal enemies, our lifetime mortal enemies, the communists? He's espousing naked Marxism. Straight out. Straight out. And when did it ever work? Show me where it ever worked. Show me where it ever worked. Now, I know the liberals will say, well, Sweden is the model. We're not talking about the Soviet Union of 1920-30. They only want Sweden in America, or they always hold up Sweden, Finland, Denmark. It's a false analogy. These are small countries with largely homogeneous populations, with a small immigrant population, and they don't have an entire welfare class sitting on their behinds doing nothing. So you can't make the comparison between an American economic system and America's ethnic diversity with that of Sweden. It doesn't work. The economic system works for Sweden because it's a small country with a small population and largely a homogeneous population at that. That's why this little economic system that you keep holding up in your universities works for Sweden, but can never work here. We have a welfare class that has never worked in its life, that never will work in its life, and doesn't want to work. It only wants to take what's not theirs. And if this class doesn't get what it wants, it burns cities to the ground. They don't seem to have that problem in Sweden. No, they don't have exactly that problem in Sweden, so it's a false analogy. I've thought long and hard, why, well, why don't you want a Swedish system here? Why don't you follow the Scandinavian model? Because it's not the same, it's apples and oranges in plain English. Massive population difference, massive ethnic diversity here, linguistic diversity here, geographic diversity here, not a comparable situation at all. So anyway, now we're stuck with this. Tomorrow, he's uh, giving the U.N. speech. Oh, God, that's a nightmare for people living in New York. Can you imagine? That's tomorrow. The city shuts down for him. And then Thursday, it's on to Washington so he can sully Congress with his big lie. You know, I have an obligation to speak out. I don't care what vestment the person is wearing. It could be a rabbi with a yarmulke who I feel is lying. You've heard me say it. Why must we worship this pope? 
Show me where I have to worship a pope who is espousing everything that is anathema to my way of life. Tell me where. Tell me where you have to bow down to this guy. He's only a human being. What is this? He's a descendant of God. Where did they get this from? Where did they get this idea from? Rubio says the Pope is the successor of Peter. What does that mean, he's the successor of Peter? What does that make him infallible? He's flesh. He was born of a mother and a father. He started out as a secular man. Bouncer. Couldn't make it as a bouncer. Looked ahead. He saw the red and the black. Didn't want to go into the military, so he went into the church. And he is such a good player at politics, he's now the Pope. That's how it works. I know it's a simplistic view, but that's exactly the truth. Sometimes simplifying things clarifies things. It doesn't always uh, miss the mark. <laughs> it hits the mark perfectly. So here we are now. Now he's espousing everything he grew up with. Peronista, Juan Peron, Evita Peron were ruling the country when he was a formidable uh, for, uh, in the learning stages of his political life. And now he's espousing straight out socialist principles. And so I say, we know about radical Islam and the danger it poses to us in the world. But now we have radical Catholicism to confront. And make no mistake about it, and I know this is hard for you to understand, that <clears throat> and I said it yesterday, probably better than I'm going to say it today. Bombs kill people. Ideas can kill a nation. Radical ideas can kill a nation. We know about radical Islam. We know about radical Catholicism. We've talked about radical Judaism on this show. For example, the, the crazed Orthodox rabbi who stabbed lesbians during a gay parade in Jerusalem. Uh, maniacs. There are radicals in all religions. Why? You know, focus on Islam for sure, because unfortunately, there's a lot of radical Islamists who want to blow things up and kill people. Now, while Catholics are not blowing things up and killing people, the Pope's ideas have killed people. They've killed many people. <laughs> when you do this to a society, you kill people. You kill their lives. You steal their lives from them. Look what happened in Russia. Look what happened in Cambodia with a, a well-meaning Marxist professor, Pol Pot. He was, a, he was a professor, went to Paris, studied classical Marxism in the University of Paris at the Sorbonne. He came back and he instituted his communist ideas. He hired 10 to 12 year old kids to go around and humiliate, beat up their teachers, anyone with eyeglasses, engineers, artists. I'm not suggesting the Catholics are gonna do that, don't get me wrong, but everything starts with an idea and faulty ideas lead to faulty inactions and faulty inactions can lead to a tremendous catastrophe for humankind. Everything this Pope is espousing is the type of garbage you would hear at Harvard, Berkeley, Stanford, in departments where they're gu uh, guarded by a tenure, they're guarded by uh, tenured professorships, and they espouse this rubbish and get away with it because the kids are afraid to debate them for fear that they'll, they'll get an F in the course. Well, he's not in a classroom right now. He is now debating politics, and we have every obligation. It is not a crime to debate politics in the United States of America, sir. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, the Pope arrived in uh, Washington just now on his air-conditioned uh, plane following his trip to communist Cuba where he did nothing for the dissidents and nothing for those in dungeons, held in dungeons in Cuba. And now he comes here to uh, lecture us about immigration, social injustice, and economic inequality, so-called. That, that's, his, that's his agenda. So he's, he's, he's got a great fellow traveler in our president. And uh, that the Republicans went along with inviting him to, to a joint congr congressional uh, address is beyond me. But there is no Republican Party. I mean, we know that's an old story. We know the drunk who runs it. We know that Boehner is a factotum of the Democrat Party. In fact, I found an article that I thought was intriguing on that. Uh, no, not, not the Gatestone Institute on Germany's migrant rape epidemic of Muslims raping people in mass. No, no, no. About Germany, no. Not that FBI refuses to cooperate in Hillary Clinton email server 